everybody, welcome back to the Boston Greeks podcast. I am Ari and with me is my co-host Foti Stamos. Hi Foti, how are you? Good in yourself, Ari. I'm doing great. I'm real excited about our segment tonight. We have uh, somebody who's after our own heart with uh, amazing Greek products. Foti, tell us a little more about her and then let's bring her on. Well, Ari, as you know, you know, we're constantly being surprised at the fact that we are able to do so many segments on Boston Greeks because so many great Greeks are doing great things. And with us tonight is a special guest. Her name is Elaine Sitas, who is responsible and one of the founders, and she'll let us know a little bit more about the journey, who started a, uh, a nice concept called Taste and Art of Greece that pretty much brings to us amazing products from the motherland over here through e-commerce. And now what I find is super exciting is that there's an actual physical pop-up that you can go visit. But before we get into those details, let's bring on to the show, Elaine Sitas. Elaine, thank you so much for joining us. Hi guys, thanks for having me. Our pleasure, our pleasure. So Elaine, uh, what got into you to launch this. <laughs> what, what, what got into you aside from Greekness? <laughs> this, this, and this, you know what's crazy about this question too now with the pop-up, I just turned 50 and I'm like, what the heck was I thinking starting a company when I'm 50 years old? <laughs> well, you know what? You know what? Let, let me say something very quickly. In, in this uh, climate of like young tech people starting like all these little tech companies, everybody thinks that the entrepreneur has to be like 20 something. But I was reading in Forbes or, or some magazine that most successful, and that's the key here, most successful entrepreneurs are in their mid 40s and up when they start their companies. So you are in perfect company and, and you're at the and, perfect age. And I'll give you a one up on that. My, my former mentor, I was a career executive assistant before going into this full time. I worked for presidents and CEOs. Mm -hmm. And um, my last boss, who I adored, retired, and he, I called him to tell him about this venture. And I said, what am I thinking? You know, and he goes, you know what, Elaine? The founder of Home Depot started at 50 years old. Yeah. So there's and I, he said, put that in perspective. Put that well, in perspective. You know perspective. what, you have, when you're, when you're at that age, you have the maturity, you have the experience, you have kind of like a good head on your shoulders to be able to execute something as well, it, difficult and as complicated as a, a, a business venture. So and, and more power to you. you know, think of this, online and retail, more brick and mortar are actually two different things. But online is almost a lot harder because you're having to stay in touch with the people through a computer. You're, you're the marketer, you're the PR, right? You're doing the website, you're doing all the information, you're doing everything down to measuring the pieces. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a staff, Strati, who's my business partner. We'll talk about that in a second. You know, he can only do so much from where he is. Um, so a lot of that came, came to me doing it. And, and where did I learn all that stuff? From my 25 plus years as an executive assistant, I learned how to be a marketer, a PR person. So you how were to perfect. speak with different, how to work with difficult people and how to, how to um, <laughs> present myself. Do you know what I mean? You don't get to be working for CEOs and presidents without having some poise and yeah. Being able to speak comfortably and being strong. Um, well, Elaine, if it makes you feel any better, speaking about dealing with difficult people, I deal with Ari on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, I, we, we commend you, Fati, for that. But that that's, that's amazing. But, that's, that's excellent. And, and like we said, you are in the perfect place right now in your life to do this. And I would have more faith in you right now than I would if you were like 22 or 25 uh, or even 30. You know, but, I, there's nothing that scares me about this. I mean, it could be for some, it could be, it's, this was a natural and doing the pop-up shop um, experience right now was a natural progression based on where we've brought the business and almost we'll be celebrating our three year anniversary of being online, November 15th. Nice. Wow, so, awesome. so we're still fresh and, and new, but, but we're constantly reinventing, reinvigorating. We're constantly surprising our customers and we have tons of repeat customers. We're meeting new customers, especially now in this retail space. I've met a ton of new customers. So let me ask you, um, what led you to do a, like a physical location, like a pop-up? 
Well, look, there were a couple of things. We, we started this company purely online boutique when I had a, a part-time, I, not a part-time, this was my part-time mm-hmm. hobby and job was taste and art of Greece. And I had a full-time job as a career executive assistant. That changed. I decided to do, go into this full-time. We grew very fast. Online was extremely robust during COVID where some businesses were failing and having issues. We were in, we were in an established at a time where we were ready for COVID for, for people to be driven online. Black yeah. Friday last year was online, right? There were no mm-hmm. hordes of people waiting at the mall last year. So we, we were ready for it and we imploded. We were really good this well, year. Um, Festivals started to trickle back things, started, but I said the, the online now, everyone and their mother went online during yeah. COVID, you know, leather stores. <laughs> and we were still good. I mean, I would say I'm pretty good about making collaborations and alliances with lots of other Greek shops, even people that would be considered competitors. I'm very supportive of our Greek community all over the USA. People trying to make, you know, I try to make alliances and, and Um, I've been hearing from a lot of people that online for everyone has changed this year because now more people are going out, less people are, you know, they want, and they want that return to brick and mortar. They, and I had an exceptional deal by Simon Malls before COVID, I was supposed to take a kiosk when we were a lot smaller, Mm. obviously didn't do that when COVID hit, they came back to me and said, would you like to revisit having a kiosk? And I said, I can't do a kiosk now. We're too big. I said, I need a store. And I said, but I don't think that's going to be possible. And the lady who helped me at Simon Mall said, come in and let's look at what we've got. We took over an old walking company store. I can't get into the exact specifics, but they gave us an exceptional deal. They loaned us a lot of like these beautiful fixtures. We're we're on camera, right? Because I could even show you guys this. I could even walk you around the shop a little bit. if if Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, They gave us exceptional fixtures here. You know what? If I can, well, I'll do it this way so you can see, right? Like these tables, all the, the tied in, right? Uh, I didn't have to pay for any of this, this is other than the product, amazing. right? The shop is. So I didn't have to do anything. This is an old walking company store that we have transformed into this Greek market. When you come in, there's music and video playing on the TV. Okay, Greek music and video. So cool. I'm infusing a smell of, of baklava and Greek coffee. <laughs> I to alternate, awesome. right? So you've, got, so you've got the smell, right? All this, we have a tagline, awaken your senses, okay? Mm. And we're, we're doing that in the store. Around the store, you see signs about what, what the scupa is, what, what this means, right? Uh, Who made yes. these ceramics? Beautiful. Who made these? The bird whistles. You know, where they came from, the meaning of Ahuria, the, all these so where so, so tell us, tell us what the location uh, real quick. So we know wh- where you are, wh- wh- what you're talking about here. So I'm in, I'm in the mall of New Hampshire. Oh, it's in Manchester, nice. New Hampshire, mm-hmm. off of 293. It's very easy from, from Boston to take you anywhere from an hour to 40 minutes to get here. Yeah. Um, you know, so we have a lot of New England customers coming to see us. We're, we're uh, between the J.C. Penney and Macy's that are in this mall. The mall of New Hampshire is actually a very, like some people are like, are you afraid the mall is not going to have business? People think malls are dying dinosaurs. That's not true. This mall is actually very vibrant, tons of foot traffic. Hmm. And it's not even- If I Christmas remember time. correctly, did you have the governor at your grand opening? Governor Sununu accepted my invitation to come and do our ribbon cutting, which was that is pretty amazing. Cool. Yeah. He came in and Congressman Chris Pappas, we have a lot of Greeks, there are three Greek churches in Manchester. So Nunu wow. actually has Greek roots. He's Lebanese and his grandmother was Greek. Really? Yeah, so they already had, and the next day a woman came in that looked very familiar. And I, I said, I, I'm sorry, you look familiar to me. And she leaned in, she goes, I'm governor Sununu's sister. She, the <laughs> sister, his sister came in the day after because she was so impressed, That's awesome. you know? Um, yeah. So we, we've had a lot of, of buzz here, a lot of support from the community, but, but we have tried to, to bring Greece into the mall of New Hampshire and people, the impression that people are telling us we had some test days before we had the physical open, yep. mm-hmm. we hit everything we wanted to hit. 
people who want to go to Greece are inspired by the shop. People who've been to Greece said, wow, this is like authentic stuff. But, you know, this isn't like the, the, the cheap tchotchke things that you see at the, t they said, you, three people have told me you have better things in the shops in Greece, <laughs> like as far as handmade ceramics and, and authentic pieces, you know, um, we, we hit all the sensory levels we wanted to hit with the shop. Feeling yeah. like you're in, you're in, in some Greek marketplace and you got all these little handicrafts. We also have, you know, things like the aprons and the towels that you see at the tourist shops. We have a lot of beautiful handmade items like the, you saw on the wall there. I'm not sure how well the camera showed yeah. it, but the Buria, it, the different things like the scupa. We have um, sheep bells. Sheep bells are, I'll show you something on camera. One of our, our trademark items is our hand painted sheep bells by an artist on the island of Lesbos. <laughs> I sand, love that song. Right? Cool. Yeah. That's so cool. So so cool. She, she takes 100% copper sheep bells, hand paints them. You know, we have like our, our roja. These just came in, our Santorini roja. Oh, nice. Beautiful. And beautiful. Look at the paintwork on this. Wow. Love Handmade it. Handmade ceramics from top to finish, scratch from scratch, top to finish with some emblems and things. You know, we have the vintage bags you find on the placa you know like and those are made in greece they they got yeah. them made they're actually made in greece they're not made in china and that's one of our when we came on the scene three years ago we wanted to start a made in greece movement we were seeing all these we did our research lots of these shops they weren't talking about the artists they were bringing in anything and you knew some of that jewelry was coming from china it wasn't coming from mm -hmm. greece yeah. They're saying we bring in Greek stuff. Well, the Greek stuff was going through from China to Greece to them. You know, we we were trying mm. to we were trying to kind of go direct from Greece to here, and that was our whole mission mm -hmm. um, was to promote these artists. Talk about who's making the work. You know what the meaning of the work is. What's the meaning of a pomegranate? Not just here. This is pretty. Put this on your shelf. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to tell a story as we do around the shop. That, that ties in, we, you know, from what we have online. Um, you know, we talk even about, we have a sign about the coffee culture of Greece in the shop. So people mm -hmm. understand the importance of coffee in Greece, Greek culture, you know. Um, so we wanted to tell not just, we didn't want to just sell products. We wanted to tell a story about the artists, about the traditions, about the culture. And the other big thing, the support of these artists. Some of these artists never sold in the USA. This was oh, a big wow. deal for them to bring things here. And last year during COVID, we donated over $11,000 through virtual festivals and to the Hellenic Nursing Home in Canton, Massachusetts. Wow. So we did that in 2020 to help with all the churches that weren't getting the revenues sure. that they're used to because no one was going to church. This year, we've done some as well. We've done some virtuals. We're again pledging to the Hellenic Nursing Home in Canton. We were featured on two television shows in Greece for our because we caught their attention with what we do and what we talk about, that we were a little bit different than some of the other shops. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our mission is charity as well. Wow. That that is great. That's yeah. impressive. Good for you. Yeah, you're, you're doing great things. The shop looks amazing. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about you as an individual, where you grew up? Um what part of Greece is your background from? Can you give us a little bit about that? Sure. And I was just going to say, if you guys were worried about me not talking enough, <laughs> I guess you could tell I'm a talker. <laughs> yeah, you're the perfect guest. <laughs> so look, my father was born on the island of Lesbos in a a beautiful village, yep. village, traditional village. We used to go every summer. I grew up in, in Andover, Massachusetts. Yeah. Oh, nice. Met met my, my husband in my thirties and moved to Manchester, New Hampshire. He's from Manchester and his family's from Thessaloniki. Okay. Um, when we would go back to Greece, uh, I go pretty frequently as a child, we went frequently and I made this friend, Strativa Yuka. He was part of our parea. You nice. know, we, we always just, he was someone who was not a village boy. He was a village boy, but he wasn't a village. You know, he he just struck me as someone really smart. And I always remembered that he was going to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. I said, this is a boy that's going to do something. He's going to do something with his life. But we lost touch. We didn't have email back then, cell mm -hmm. phones. You know, they had to go 
to the drugstore to go make a phone call, you know, at the page, you, remember, you, had a, remember you know, that. like they, they didn't have phones and stuff. So we didn't keep in touch. I saw him again when I was in my thirties, right before I got engaged and he was engaged and we just always had a fondness for each other. And when I came back with my husband, I met his wife. They had two kids, my husband and I, it's just us with lots of nieces and nephews. But um, I got really close with his kids and his wife and we just wanted to do something together. He, you know, economy in Greece was not great. He didn't have a job at that time that he enjoyed. Um, he talked about opening a traditional store, something. And I said, you know, I love the idea of it. And I said, you know, I said, maybe we could do something online. Maybe we can bring like some authentic things from Greece that no one else is bringing or, or do something different than what other people are doing. That's the conversation it started. We were in, uh, we were actually together. At, I was doing something for my job and I had to go to Larissa and he came with us. He came with me and my husband. And this is where the conversation started. I remember the exact moment in the car. Neither of us dreamed that it was gonna take off like this. It was just gonna be a little hobby, something fun for us to do together to celebrate our friendship, a real labor of love. Um, and it just imploded. We just, we just went for it. And uh, we got a lot of great attention, a lot of support. And that's how it started. It started as all, a one year of research before we launched the online. So the conversation started in 2017. We launched our website November 15th of 2018. Um, so that, that's how everything started. And we were thrilled. And, you know, the funny thing is we, we start, we feel we kicked off a trend because now almost three years later, when you barely saw anyone selling a pomegranate online, now yeah. everyone's selling pomegranates online. When no one was selling March bracelets, now I can count five shops that are selling March bracelets online. So, okay, we, we inspired some people to do some of similar things or talk about artists all of a sudden when no one was talking about artists. But you know what? That's okay because we started it. And we brought that Made in Greece movement to all these shops and made them pay attention to what they were bringing and mm -hmm. supporting, supporting Greece and Greek culture. So it's been kind of exciting. It's been an exciting ride. Good for you. I mean, um, just from our endeavors, we know how on the, you know, behind the scenes, how challenging and time consuming uh, and what goes into what you're doing. So we definitely um, commend you on your, on your work, your efforts and what you're doing for the culture in general, because, you know, as you mentioned, uh, with COVID and with all these craziness that's going on around in our, in our world, you know, we're always like feeling like we're taking steps back. But when you listen to individuals like yourself, we're, pro we're progressing. Uh, it's great to see that there are products coming from Greece and there's passionate individuals like yourself that are bringing it to the forefront where now it's become accessible. Uh, you know, we had conversations in pre previous segments where, you know, we're a growing culture as Greek Americans, but it seems that we're also disconnected to some degree. Mm -hmm. And the technology and platforms, we're bringing it together. Um, the brick and mortar, you know, is great because it's a different experience. It's great yes. to, to, to it's be, it's great to touch things. It's great to speak to somebody. There's a different energy involved in brick and mortar, and. You know, growing up as a Greek American in Boston, we were very fortunate that, you know, we were able to go to Greek markets, uh, Greek shops, Greek travel agencies, for that matter. I remember um, that. <laughs> right. And we were able to, like, have these different experiences that doesn't really exist anymore. And to see you bring that element uh, is, is amazing. Well, you know, the other huge thing, remember last year, a lot of people didn't get to go to Greece. Yeah. In 2020. I, I went twice. I actually came home three days before Trump had shut the planes down. Oh, <laughs> so I was actually home right before it hit. And then what? I was able to go last summer with a travel exemption for business. Oh, good. Uh, so, you know, w one of the biggest things we heard last year from people was thank you for bringing Greece to us because they couldn't go to Greece. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's amazing. Uh, what you're doing is, is so cool. And, uh, uh, give us uh, give us your website address and any like social media or anything like that that you so have. our full name is Taste and Art of Greece. The and is all spelled out where www.tasteandartofgreece.com. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tasting Art of Greece is also on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, perfect. I ventured a little bit into TikTok, but I'm not quite there. You know, I'm just trying oh, to gosh. learn all, you're, you're, trying to you're learn ahead all of this us. stuff. I'm like, <laughs> how much can I learn? I mean, it's like, you know. <laughs> but um, so and but we would love people to come see us at the Mall of New Hampshire. We have today a couple from Virginia that has shopped with us online, planned a whole trip in New Hampshire just to come see my shop. Awesome. They came to see the shop. We're having dinner with them tomorrow night. And we have stories that are going to happen like that all winter long. Cause I have another family coming from New Jersey this weekend that That's are awesome. just so excited. This is the thing guys, none of this would be possible without the support of the customers and the people we are extremely grateful for, and people like you have asked us to come and talk on your shows. Yes. We are so, we feel very blessed and, and thankful and that's the stuff, you know, we want to help other people too. the Filotimo of our culture. It's, it's just wonderful. It's, it's, and so I can't thank you guys enough. I can't thank the people enough who've checked us out. And if you haven't checked us out yet, come see us, come see why we're different. And also that we we're a care, company that cares and tries to give back whenever possible. Awesome. That's amazing. And, and you know, Fati, Fati and I, uh, we mentioned we've been in, in kind of this business for 20 plus years and you know, nothing really phases me at this point, but I'll tell you right now, after listening to you and your story, I have kind of that renewed old school, like excitement and inspiration that I used to get when we first started out, because it's so nice to hear, not just that you're doing like a nice business, but it's like that passion you have for your, your culture and the passion you have to share with others. And the fact that you, you want to, you know, you want to help other Greeks too. It's not just make yourself like successful That's you want right. to make all successful so uh, thank you for like ha- giving me that, that that old school inspiration that I, I thought i was missing for so long oh no and you should see the people coming in here the people that aren't even greek the excitement they cut ca- that stuff is what makes it like i'm here all day every day since the small store opened i'm going to be here all day every day so nobody has to worry about finding i will be here you know like <laughs> Um, and but and I love it when really. you love what you're doing. What they say it's not work, right? When you love right. what you're doing, exactly. yeah, yeah. and I love seeing people just get so excited when they come in the shop. It has been so gratifying. That's why I said at the beginning of this interview that I knew I did the right thing. The first person who came in and smiled, I knew right away this was the right move. Even if we move locations at some point, we're not sure we're going to stay here. We're going to see how it goes. We'll always be online pop-up experiences are going to be part of our regimen for now on, whether it's at the mall in New Hampshire or somewhere else, they will find us. And at festivals, we'll come, we're going to come back to Greek festivals as soon as, as soon as we can. That's amazing. Um, This is great. Elaine, I, we want to uh, dearly thank you for your time. I know you've got a lot going on. Uh, A lot of, you know, time goes into what you're doing. Like you say, you're there every day. Um, I'm sure you put in a lot of hours, right? Um, oh yeah. So for the for those that want to take a trip up to the mall, you're there every day. What are your hours there? So the mall hours right now, actually, why don't I give you? Because November first, they're actually changing slightly. Okay. The mall from Monday to Wednesday is generally open eleven to eight. Okay. Um, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday will be ten to nine. Okay. Sunday will be eleven to six. Okay. And, and then there. it's going to change as they get to Thanksgiving. There's probably going to be longer hours. If they mm-hmm. look up at the Mall of New Hampshire, they can follow that. And every day I will be at this location. If they're looking to meet me, they will find me. I mean, I might take a morning off. I just suggest don't come early in the morning. Come a little late on the day because I may have someone open for me. But I will be here every day. <laughs> Spoken awesome. like a true freak. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, uh, that's great elaine uh we, we you know we wish you uh uh continued success we'd love to keep have you keep us posted uh with our audience on what's new uh what's coming up in the pipeline for taste and art of greece um, and Foti, we, we we should talk to her after the interview for uh you know for for any potential collaboration because uh you know we do a lot of stuff you do a lot of stuff maybe we yeah, could do something together it would be great Absolutely. And we had all those events this weekend. We, we had the dancers from the Boston Le- Lycion mm. came and danced. And then, like we said, we had the, the governor for the 
ribbon cutting and we're we're already talking about some fun things to do at Christmas time. So there'll always be Perfect. something going on here. We're gonna bring in guest artists because we also in this shop, we're representing artists around the globe. So not just Greece. We have a couple of people from Boston who are right. Greek, who have made stuff. We might invite them to come in and do some special things for us here. Um, so, so we're celebrating all of Greek culture from around the globe in this shop. Awesome. That's perfect. That's awesome. That's so cool. Uh, Alea, we want to thank you once again for taking the time to be with us. We want um, to thank everybody out there for watching and listening. We're going to link all of her information that she mentioned in the podcast. We're going to have it in the video and the podcast and the audio. And um, we want to thank you once more. Everybody, if you have the chance, get online, but even more importantly, get up to our store and check it out while it's there. And uh, thanks again. Thanks everybody for watching and listening. Foti, thank you. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.